What's up everyone? I hope the holiday weekend treat you well. I'm Taylor and it's time for the weekly rundown. To kick things off, take a look at this cuteness. An Elvis impersonator had some folks in a Tennessee assisted living facility up and dancing. One for the money, two for the show, three to get ready now, go, can't go. Elvis Presley in a blue sparkly sequin jacket sang and swiveled for residents at Wellington Manor in Newport, Tennessee. The outdoor performance had them on their feet dancing with staff members and clapping along in rhythm. There was appropriate social distancing as they enjoyed the music, which was part of their 50s week celebration. I think it means that they get to think back to a happier time, to a time when they had a little more of their youth and the music was just great. I mean, come on, the 50s, who can beat it? Wellington Manor celebrates 50s week every year and their other activities include a soda shop and sock hop. That's awesome, I love that. A real estate deal is sealed in Wisconsin, but the buyers had no idea what surprise awaited them. Jeremy Roth has this and more. A developer that bought an old Wisconsin property got a very festive surprise. A winter wonderland was waiting in the wings. The former National Tinsel Manufacturing Company was auctioned about a year ago. But when the new owners took a tour of the more than 100-year-old building, they found a treasure trove of untouched holiday inventory. Thousands and thousands of holiday trees, lights, yard characters, and wreaths filled the 90,000-square-foot space. And employees can't help but get into the holiday spirit. In order for them to proceed with their development plans, the new owners are now having a pop-up summer holiday sale to empty the building. Everything is 50% off. This endangered penguin in Australia is passing the time by binge-watching shows about penguins. Uh, let me explain. According to the Perth Zoo, Pierre was found washed ashore in southern Australia. He's now recovering at the zoo, and since he's the only rockhopper penguin there, employees let him watch shows about penguins on an iPad so he doesn't get lonely. His favorite is an animated show about a family of penguins called Pingu. He also enjoys documentaries about penguins and penguin live streams from other zoos. The zoo is working with its international colleagues so he can find a new place to recover and hopefully make some new real life rockhopper friends. Okay, now this is a story all about how Will Smith is heading back to Bel Air. Smith and his Fresh Prince of Bel Air co-stars are returning for an unscripted special in honor of the show's 30th anniversary. It will release on HBO Max sometime around Thanksgiving. People Magazine reports that the special will be taped on September 10th, which is the Fresh Prince's actual anniversary. Now, Channing Tatum. We all know him, we all love him, and now he's proving he's the ultimate girl dad. The actor announced on Instagram that he's written a children's book called The One and Only Sparkella. Oh, it's about a little girl who gets teased for wearing sparkly things to school. Well, that was definitely me and my best friend from elementary, Lindsay. But her dad helps and encourages her. Tatum posted a photo of himself with the book to Instagram saying he found his inner child during quarantine and ended up creating the book for his seven-year-old daughter, Everly. The book is set for release next May. I didn't think he could get even more unreal, but he did. Moving on, this is something I think a lot of my friends would be super pumped for. Nike has launched its first activewear line for new and expectant mothers. The maternity collection is called Nike M. Nike says the products in the line are designed to meet the changing needs of women's bodies before, during, and after pregnancy. The new items will be available online starting September 17th. Friends, you know where to go. A singing parrot in England is giving Beyonce a run for her money. It was during lockdown that workers at Lincolnshire Wildlife Park first heard Chico, the singing parrot, singing Beyonce's hit, If I Were a Boy. The park, which claims to house the UK's largest collection of parrots, 
says Chico has more tunes under his birdie belt and they plan to release more videos. So keep your eyes peeled for more tweets on this little baddie birdie. Okay, if this story doesn't describe 2020, then I really don't know what does. I think we can all agree it's been a not so great year. Well, a Massachusetts couple brought a ray of sunshine to a cloudy day by tying the knot in front of family and friends, but watch what happened when the groom made a joke about 2020 in his vows. Let's face it, 2020 has not been the best year. <laughs> See, 2020 knows it sucks and now it's just showing off. The couple who already postponed their wedding didn't let the ominous display ruin their big day even when heavy rains started after the ceremonial. It poured, it absolutely poured. It started pouring, my dress got soaking wet. I take it as a good sign that we didn't get electrocuted. That's the spirit. Once the storm passed, the couple's positivity was rewarded with a lovely rainbow backdrop to remember the day. A man in Australia returned home to find, get this, two huge snakes had fallen through his kitchen ceiling. Oh, heck no. I found a baby lizard in my room and I threw a fit this week, okay? Snakes, no, no. The carpet pythons measured around, oh no, nine and a half feet and 8.2 feet long. Snake catcher Stephen Brown, who removed the snakes from the property, said they were, quote, two of the fattest snakes he has ever seen. Brown also explained how it's breeding season for snakes, and it's likely the two males were fighting over a nearby female. Okay, calm down, boys. There's plenty of snakes in the world, and I promise they're not in ceilings. But from ceilings to cars, critters are everywhere, you guys. A rescue of a different kind for police and fire crews in New Hampshire. A motorist called police after this little critter was found trapped in his engine compartment. Two police officers freed the groundhog, but just like the movie where the day starts over and over repeatedly, the groundhog kept running back into the car's engine once it was freed. It took a tow truck lifting the car off the ground so firefighters could crawl underneath and remove the animal for good. I love stories like these, they're just so entertaining, but I have some very sweet stories coming up for you. I'm introducing you to four kiddos that have the biggest hearts and one that has bravery that's out of this roof. Don't go away, the Weekly Rundown, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Weekly Rundown. Today I'm showing extra love for some seriously amazing kiddos. I'm introducing you to Brady, Evan, Logan, and Skye. First up, Brady. The 10-year-old boy from Ohio is doing his part to protect our furry friends. In fact, he's gone way above beyond the call of duty. After learning police canines aren't always issued bulletproof vests, he started Brady's Canine Fund, a nonprofit that raises money to supply vests to police and military dogs. And oh yeah, Brady's biz is booming. So far, the project has raised over $300,000 and supplied vests to more than 250 dogs dogs across the states. The fund's Facebook page is littered with images and stories of the now protected pooches, like Canine Benny, whose handler, Brady says, was moved to tears by the project's noble efforts. Up next is six-year-old Evan. Kristen Duran shares his story. Meet six-year-old Evan Kaner. He's known as the Readosaurus on social media, where he reads and reviews some of his favorite kids' books. If you ask Evan's parents, they'd tell you his passion for reading and learning about animals came from visits to the Alaska Sea Life Center. He just loves the animals in Alaska. He can tell us facts about them, and so the zoo and the Sea Life Center are pretty prominent with us. I go to every summer and I love the octopus. He's always swimming around or changing colors with those eight legs. So you could imagine the heartbreak when they learned the Sea Life Center was in danger of closing for good. I was kind of shocked at how well I thought he was going to take it. Like kind of like, you know, like we'll still see the animals. They're Alaska animals. We'll see them in the wild. And he was kind of like, 
but then we won't learn about them. So Evan, with the help of mom, Jennifer, decided to do something about it. They're going to close because the animals don't have enough money. So I decided to start blowing pictures since my mom gave me the idea. He's using his Ritasaurus social media accounts to spread awareness. and exchange custom artwork for donations to the center. And any bit of change he can get his hands on. So he's like, that probably bought like maybe like the octopus and food for the day or something. And I was like, yeah, probably. To save his happy place. His heart's in it and I love it. So if it was, if the Sea Life Center was just based on heart, I think it would stay open forever up here. <laughs> you can eat open, that's all I wanna do. Supporters can score a piece of Evan's original artwork simply by donating directly to the Sea Life Center and then sending a screenshot to his Ritasaurus Facebook page along with their address. The caners say no donation is too small. Now, when life gave one family in Utah lemons, three brothers decided to make lemonade, literally. After finding out their younger brother would need a second open heart surgery, the oldest sibling decided he had to do something to help. Sarah Park introduces us to our next kiddo, Logan. The chips are 50 cents. On a hot summer afternoon. The sodas are a dollar. A soda and a bag of chips can be a quick fix. And I think the lollipops are free. But for one big brother. We thought it would be money. nice because it's oh, yeah. a really good way to customer, get some money oh, yeah. for my mom. Logan Myers set up this lemonade stand to help fix a bigger problem. He has some problems with his heart and he's getting some surgery done. And this is his worst surgery yet. Logan's brother Emmett is 19 months old and is about to undergo his second open heart surgery. We've been life lighted four times already via the helicopter and then um, life flight with a fixed wing four times already. So, and this will be our fifth and sixth time there and back. Emmett was born with DeGeorge syndrome, a congenital heart problem. His mom got the call that a bed had opened up at a hospital in Boston, where he'll have major surgery on his heart and his airway. Emmett's mom says there is no fix for congenital heart disease. Each surgery is patching things up until the next surgery. He has been through so much. It, it, it amazes me at how much this child has gone through. Emmett's family relies on the Ronald McDonald House at hospitals like Primary Children's Hospital. But in Boston, the house is primarily used for families of children with cancer. So Logan, with the help of his older brothers, took matters into his own hands. She has money to get things while she's in Boston, like food and other supplies for Emmett. Word got out and Logan got a surprise visit. The Weber County Sheriff's Department, Riverdale Police Department, and Harley Davidson pitched in to make a donation and drop off a few shirts. Thank you guys for doing what you're doing to help out your, it's your brother, right? Logan says he set up the stand because he loves his brother. He's smiling a lot sometimes, um, and he is a good brother. Emmett and his mom could stay in Boston anywhere from a few weeks to a few months, depending on his recovery. Get well soon, Emmett. Now to my final amazing kiddo of the week. The adage goes, when you fall down, you should get up and try again. But what if you plummeted off a stories high vertical skateboard ramp, crashed to the ground and ended up in the ICU? And what if trying again means, well, just that. Jeannie Most shows us someone who has that kind of guts and she's only 12 years old. Are you man enough, make that girl enough, to ride down that ramp into thin air on a skateboard? Sure, old pros like Tony Hawk do it. But for 12-year-old Sky Brown, a whiz kid destined for the Olympics, this was a comeback, and this was what she was coming back from. She wiped out on a vertical ramp, had to be choppered to the ICU with a fractured skull, arm and wrist broken, not to mention that black eye. She pushed herself. Skating with a cast pushed herself right to the edge, literally. 
Three months after her dad described her as lucky to be alive, the mega at Pro Elliott Sloan Skateboarding Park with Tony Hawk providing pointers. But first she had to clear her mind, fidgeting with her helmet, flexing her injured wrist. There were nervous mutterings and giggles. Who wouldn't procrastinate? I'm 47 and can't clean my gutters, tweeted someone. It was perhaps the longest minute in her 12 years of life, ramping up her courage, and then... Sky cleared the gap, though separated from her skateboard, and yes, there is an airbag below. One viewer tweeted raised hairs and goosebumps. By her third try, Sky nailed it, staying aboard her skateboard. At least one possible future skateboarder couldn't get enough of the video. From black eye to bright smile after a leap of faith. Oh. Okay, her parents have got to be so proud, but also so scared every time she grabs her board. I have a feeling she has a lot of record-breaking moments to come in her life. Now, after the break, are you one of those people that love looking at houses on the market? And how much do you think the most expensive sheep in the world is? Plus, are you looking for a new drinking buddy? I'll tell you how your dog could be one of those. Those stories and more coming up next on the Weekly Rundown. Welcome back to the Weekly Rundown. Man's best friend is getting his own beer. Uh-huh, you heard that right. It's called Dog Brew by Bush, and the non-alcoholic bone broth is made from bone and pork butt, celery, mint, turmeric, and ginger. You can pour the whole can into a water bowl or use it to soften food. It's not the first time a brewery has included dog beer on its list, but it may be the most expensive. Get this, a four pack sells online for 10 bucks. It's currently sold out, but you can sign up for the waiting list if you're trying to get your drinking buddy going. Get ready to meet the most expensive sheep in the world. A Texo lamb broke a new record after being sold for more than $490,000 during an auction in Scotland. The bids for the lamb, named Double Diamond, quickly escalated during the auction. A consortium of three farmers fetched the six-month-old sheep for an exact price of, get this, $490,706 after an initial bid of over $13,000. Double Diamond was in the top 1% of its breed. What a fancy little guy. <laughs> Now that remote work is more common, a growing number of Americans are having second thoughts about where they live. Some are even finding cheap old houses on social media and paying as little as $10,000 for historic fixer-uppers in far-off places. NBC's Liz McLaughlin has more. My house is pretty affordable. Uh, I think it was less than my car. purchase price of my home was $18,500. I never expected we would have 1.2 million followers. They're more um, likely to take the kind of risk, move across the country and buy a house they saw on Instagram, which by the way, many people have done. Oh my gosh, what are we doing? We want to be part of a, of a story. There's so much history behind these homes. There's so much character that's involved with a lot of old homes. This is the kitchen, which will all need to be gutted and, and replaced. The project will always go longer than the time frame that you have cut out for it. And it will cost more money. And cost more money than what you allot. <laughs> I 
I actually followed that account a few months ago and oh my gosh, you guys, there are the coolest houses on there. Some of them are even like where movies or shows have been filmed. It's definitely an account you can scroll through for quite a while if you're into looking at houses. After the break, we're introducing you to this week's essential employee of the week. This is another very sweet one, so stick around. Welcome back to the Weekly Rundown. I'm Anthony Caridi with Toyota of the Desert, and it's time to introduce you to this week's Essential Employee of the Week. Let's meet Gus. Gus Tarrant. Hi, I'm Thalia Hayden with NBC Palm Springs. You are our Essential Employee of the Week. We're told that you helped save the life of an 18-year-old boy. His parents wrote in, they love you, your employees love you, you were nominated. Toyota and Honda of the Desert is giving you $1,000 for the wonderful work. Thank you so much. God, so proud of you. Hear, hearing that story from the family that wrote in to NBC, just amazing, amazing, compassionate work, saving that, saving that young man's life. And just unbelievable. We're just really taken back, and you, this is so well-deserved. We're so glad we're here this morning talking to you. And the parents <laughs> said that you are essential because you're available 24-7. You're not expecting money. You're doing it out of the kindness of your heart and because you genuinely care about people and recovery and helping them. That's why you're getting this money, and you're also going to be featured on television tomorrow. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I would like to say that, yeah, I mean, it started out as just like an opportunity to work. Like I lost my job through COVID and they gave me the opportunity to just start like, start out by just vacuuming the floors, cleaning the office. And I was blessed to have the opportunity to kind of work my way up. Um, and I'd like to thank Mitchell and everybody for not only giving me the opportunity to get sober and clean, but also for giving me the opportunity to pass it along to the next person. We're so proud of you, Gus. Thank you for everything that you do for us. Thank you for what you're doing for the community. And uh, this is your moment, buddy. So enjoy the thousand dollars. <laughs> thank you guys. Wow, what an incredible story. Congratulations again, Gus. We are so, so proud of you. Now to the encouraging quote of the week. Unexpected kindness is the most powerful, least costly, and most underrated agents of human change. And that quote is from Bob Kerry. The Weekly Rundown will be right back. Today is National Read a Book Day. So grab your favorite book or go grab your Kindle or however you read now and get to it, folks. I will too, I promise. I'll see you next week. Don't forget to smile this week.